Now to the U.S., where U.S. President Donald Trump on Sunday pays a drive, or yes, of course, pays a, a drive pass visit to his supporters outside the hospital where he is receiving his COVID-19 treatment. But medical experts have said or have raised concern over the president's decision that he may have endangered the two service staff together with him in the car, even though they wore protective gears. Sona Tunkara has more details of that in this report. Less than 24 hours after testing positive for COVID-19, President Trump was transported at the Walter Reed Military Hospital in Maryland on Friday to receive treatment. Mr. Trump on Sunday was seen paying a drive pass to visit his supporters at the hospital where he is currently receiving treatment. Experts say the president's short car trip broke public health advice to quarantine when seeking treatment for the virus and may have put secret service agents inside the vehicle at risk of infection. However, the White House judge there defended the move, saying appropriate precautions we are taking in the execution of this movement to protect the president and all those supporting it, including personal protective equipment. Meanwhile, Democrats have also criticized the trip with House of Representatives Hakim Jeffries tweeting that they need leaders and not photo ops. A growing number of people around the president, including his wife Melania Trump, senior aides and Republican senators, have tested positive with the virus. According to Johns Hopkins University, the United States has recorded 7.4 million COVID-19 cases with more than 200,000 people dead. For iAfrica TV, Sohna Tunkara. And from the report by Sahna Tunka, now joining me on the line to discuss more on this from the Washington DC is Johanna uh, Leblanc, a National Security and Foreign Affairs Legal Analyst. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, jo Johanna, for joining us. Now, Trump left the hospital to drive past supporters when he should be uh, receiving uh, treatment. Is he trying to gain the sympathy of voters ahead of the November elections? Uh, thank you so much for having me on. Um, uh, but yes, you're, you're correct. Um, the president um, did leave uh, the hospital for a split moment um, to uh, um, greet um, his supporters who were standing uh, uh, outside of the hospital. Um, uh, and what you said is very, very important in terms of trying to gain the sympathy of voters. Um, I, I think that uh, just by the essence of the president being ill, he has already gained um, the sympathy of some of the American voters. Um, because we know America are people who are very sympathetic. Uh, we have a huge heart here in this country. Um, um, for example, um, uh, the Bush um, presidential um, presidency should have been a, a one-term um, um, president. But after 9-11 happened, the country essentially rallied behind uh, uh, President um, Bush, and ultimately he was reelected. And, and, and so, what, we, what we're seeing here is, is the same kind of uh, um, kind of um, situation. While you know this is not a, a situation where there has been a terrorist attack or anything like this, but there is a tragedy. And whenever there's a tragedy in this country, mm. people tend to rally behind their leader um, in solidarity. All right. Now, of course, health experts have expressed concern over. Uh, his action now saying he was exposing people around him to the virus. Do you think this will in any way affect his re-election chances? Well, uh, you know, the president, by being um, COVID positive, uh, will have um, some kind of um, some implication. Um, now, the question is whether the implications will be good or bad. Um, but what we do know is that um, not just the president and the first lady who have tested positive for this virus, uh, we also know that a number of his advisors and his aides and, and most recently the press secretary has been tested um, positive for the virus. So what this means is that uh, we do have a number of um, presidential debates uh, um, that are scheduled um, in the coming days. Um, so the question is now whether or not the president will have a chance to debate his policy positions with um, the the, pres the Democratic um, presidential nominee, um, Joe Biden. Uh, but again, like I said earlier, um, this could be, uh, this could work against um, and also for the president. It, it depends. Um, but again, like we know, this year is like no other. Um, it's unprecedented. So anything okay. can happen at this time. 
All right, now is Trump's COVID illness a good thing for Joe Biden since he has the chance to continue engaging uh, voters physically while Trump can't at this moment? So um, Joe Biden did test negative for the virus, uh, but because we know that the incubation period is roughly five days, uh, we don't really know if um, Joe Biden is indeed, um, indeed negative. Uh, but what the... Um, um, Trump administration has laid out for now is uh, Mike Pence, who is the vice president, will continue with the debate, with the with the with, with the campaigning um, for the for, for the party for the administration. Um, but also, let's just say that um, Trump were to be severely ill and that he can no longer um, engage in his duties as the president. Now, what you will have is um, the. the the, the command, uh, the line of succession would be um, Vice President um, Biden would be the, um, the, 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 the acting president while the, the, okay. the president um, is sick. And then, and then if something happens to, to, um, to um, tr um, Pence, rather, we'll go over to Nancy Pelosi who's the Speaker of the House. All right. Johanna, many thanks for your time and um, thanks for speaking to us. Thank you very much for having me. All right. That was Jana speaking to us live from Washington, who's a, a political analyst.